Can you please swap over to this PC? Oh. <laughs> yeah, root. It's a box I set up in two days. I don't give a fuck. You can own it. So I'll just I'll just plug in the Bluetooth devices. Of course, if the Mac comes with a with a Bluetooth device built in, it works too. So, yep, seems to work. Oh, Jesus! I don't see anything on the screen. So. So I activated actually the, the device. Um, I will run the demo and show you the script afterwards. How is this done? It's quite interesting to see. Um, I just launch it and hope that it works. Because sometimes it just core dumps when you connect to it. When you launch too, ma uh, too many RFCOM connections to a single port, it tends to core dump. So here's the directory traversal going on. He plants the input manager. He plants the local root exploit. Uh, interesting to know is that um, it uses it uses my the Bluetooth address name uh, the Bluetooth name to actually find uh, the user directory name, which is Tiarizol in this case. So. I am a Mac. I am a PC. We both suck. <laughs> So now it's going to reboot. Um, that's on 10.3.9. On 10.4, you don't see anything. It won't reboot. You have a shell immediately. What's interesting is that due to the input manager, which, is, which uh, Apple calls method swizzling, which is actually like, if you know the Windows world, like app init, which you can use to inject the DLL into a process, it's actually similar, just that um, just that Apple choose to implement it globally and not only based on a single process. So if you have an input manager, and as soon as any binary is launched, the input manager launches too. And that's practically the auto start vector Kevin used. Um, and that's basically why we disconnect and then we reconnect. Because when, you, when we disconnect, um, the input manager is planted, the OBEX server closes, and when we reconnect, the OBEX server launches and launches the input manager, <laughs> which launches the local root exploit, which, are, uh, which actually changes, etc. TTYs. So without uh, Apple implementing that global input manager thing, that uh, input manager um, feature, um, that wouldn't work out. So let's see. We should ha have a shell here. If it came back, I don't know. Well, I'll just show you. Oops. Ah, oh, jeez. So that's basically how it feels. That's here. Here it gets the, um, my home deer. It extracts Cherry Zoller from uh, from the input. There you see it. It's a plain, obvious directory traversal. He makes directories. He traverse the directories, and this is uh, unauthenticated. So anybody can connect, could connect to your OBEX server and just traverse your whole uh, directory system. And I'm sorry, but every 13-year-old knows that he's, when he's writing an FTP server, he better <laughs> filters out this stuff. I'm, I mean, come on, that can, you can't be serious, but except, oof, they were. So that's the local root exploit he puts there. And that's actually the phrase here. Yeah. Okay, I think it should have it should be back up. So interesting to note also is that now we don't need to log in because Apple chose to have the RFCOM port 3, which is uh, there for um, syncing your PDA, to have it open even before you log in. And as Kevin bound it to port 3, we can now connect to it uh, even without 
we lo uh, that user logged in. So that MAC address is obviously spoofed or changed. So there we have. So that. Mm -hmm. Hello. Oh, there we are. So what user are we? We are user Bluetooth. We'll see this in a minute. Actually, what I use here is um, a T-shell, which comes with Blue Diving, which is a nice uh, auditing package for Bluetooth. Uh, it uses code, which actually was written for Blue Chase, which was a, a project from the Chaos Computer Club on, in three, 2003, I believe. I used that code to launch a shell instead of just using RFCOM and using mini, Minicom, oops, that was my microphone, using Minicom to, um, to connect to the port. So I'll just launch the shell. I'll launch the local root exploit, and we should be root. That's it. Now we can scan for other devices, compromise other devices. That PC may be within a company or whatever. It may be a Windows PC or something along these lines. Uh, important is, if you update your mach uh, machine, it's, it's patched. Kevin waited over a year until he published the stuff, so I think that's, uh, he made public the stuff, so I think that's, that's pretty reasonable enough. Oh, another thing. Oops. Well, it's kind of slow, but it works. Uh, well, anyways. I think I pretty much uh, showed the point getting my microphone over here. Oh, cool. <laughs> it worked. So there are the link keys for these devices. Um, we have... Uh, that's actually another device. It's not that beef. That was another USB stick. That, these are the devices that um, the Macintosh was authenticated to. Now, if we copy these link keys towards our Linux box and drop it in, uh, etc., Bluetooth keys, we can now connect to this device and pretend to be the Mac, and we will be authenticated towards this device. So we can actually use the services. That's about stealing the link key, which I will show afterwards also the concept behind this. So can we switch to this PC again? 